Welcome to the Oracle Database Appliance Pre-Deployment Steps Step-by-Step -step Guide. I'm Randy Heater, Director of Product Management in the Real Application Clusters and Database Appliance Team in Oracle Server Technologies. Today we're going to be learning about the steps necessary to make ready the database appliance so that you can deploy the software. When you get a database appliance, it's only imaged from the factory with the operating system and the appliance manager software. There are a few things we need to do to make ready the database appliance so that you can copy the database and grid infrastructure bits, which is what we call the end user bundle, to the database appliance so that you can then deploy it. So in this session, I'm going to show you how we configure the network for that. I'm going to cover how to download the end user bundle and copy it to the OTA, unpack the end user bundle, and then deploy the software. So the first thing you need to do is configure the network. You need to give the database appliance an identity so that you can access it. So this is necessary because you need to copy the end user bundle. And again, the end user bundle contains the database and the grid infrastructure elements that you will then deploy on the database appliance. Make sure that you've already racked and cabled and powered up the database appliance. Now we have a step-by-step -step guide on that process, so make sure that you've gone through that. So you can connect to the database appliance in one of two ways. The first way is through the Integrated Lights Out Manager. That's known as the ILOM. Now there's a separate procedure required to configure the Integrated Lights Out Manager. We don't cover that here in this step-by-step -step guide. The other way, and this is the way most people do it, is they simply connect a keyboard, mouse, and video display to the back of Node 0 on the database appliance. Node 0 is identified by position 3 on the diagram in this slide. Once you've done that, you can now log in as root with the password welcome 1. Uh, you can configure the network using the appliance manager command. Oak CLI configure first net. Now make sure that you've navigated to the right uh, directory that contains the appliance manager and that's known as slash opt slash oracle slash oak slash bin. Then you can invoke the appliance manager oak CLI and again the command is oak CLI configure first net. It will then ask you several questions so that it can then establish the right IP addresses for that database appliance so that you can get to it. So let me go to the computer now. We have a demo of configuring the first net. Okay, here we've started Oak CLI Configure First Net. Now we're doing this for virtualized deployment and we're doing it through the Integrated Lights Out Manager. This is going to be very similar for uh, a session that you run through the back of the database appliance for a bare metal deployment as well. Enter your domain name. In this case, we've got oda-demo.com. Identify your primary DNS server. Now we need to enter host names for node 0 and node 1. Here we're entering otademo-dom0 and otademo2-dom0. Now again, this is for a virtualized deployment. In the case where you're doing bare metal non-virtualized, you probably wouldn't be naming your node names with a dash dom0. Choose the network interface to configure, net 1 or net 2. In this case, since it's a virtualized deployment, we're choosing net 1 you would get different prompts if it was a bare metal deployment. We're doing static configuration, so we need to enter the IP address for net 1 on node 0 and enter the IP address for net 1 on node 1. This gives the database appliance an identity so that we can now copy the end user bundle to it. Enter the net mask for net 1, and the system will come back and figure out what the gateway is based on the IP addresses that you entered. It'll go ahead and start the configuration for the first net. It's plumbing the IPs for node 0 and now it'll plumb the IPs for node 1. And that's it. We're done with configuring the first net. Now we can copy to the database appliance. So we've just seen a demo of how to configure the first net. At this point, 
you need to identify the right end user bundle that you want to download and then copy to the database appliance. So on an external client, go to support.oracle.com. You want to navigate to MOS note 888.888.1. This is the MOS note that tells you what the latest version of the database appliance system is and any known issues. So check that MOS note and identify what the latest version of the database appliance manager is. Then go back to your database appliance and run the following appliance manager command, oak CLI show version dash detail. Now, we're going to do a live demo of this momentarily, but when you run that command, show detail, you'll get output that looks like this. In the upper left, it will tell you what system version you're running. If the version's out of date, you're going to have to re-image your database appliance. Those instructions are in that MOS note 888.888.1. So let me show you how to identify what the right end user bundle is. We'll go ahead and do a demo right now of that. I've logged into support.oracle.com. And in the upper right search area, I'm entering 888.888.1. That's the MOS note that gives us the latest versions and known issues. Let's go ahead and navigate to that. Here it is. Okay, let's click on latest release. By the way, uh, while we're on this, if you look at useful links, that's a way to get to the configurator. If you want to download the offline configurator, useful links contains that link. But let's go to latest release. This tells us that we're dealing with Oracle Database Appliance 2.10. Now what we want is to be able to download for a bare metal deployment, Oracle Database Appliance 210 End User Bundle. This is Grid Infrastructure and the RDBMS. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this link, and it will take me to the link for this End User Bundle. I suggest always reading the readmes before you download. Let's go ahead and do that real quickly. Patch information, prerequisites, make sure you read prerequisites. New features, known issues. Once you've completed that, you're ready to go ahead and download. So go ahead and download it. Save it to your laptop or desktop system, or save it to a USB storage device. Once the download completes, you're ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so we've just seen a demo of how to identify the right end user bundle to download. We've downloaded it to our laptop or desktop system. Now we're ready to go ahead and upload it to the database appliance. So use SCP to copy it up to the database appliance to node zero. A lot of people put it in a directory slash TMP. Now another way to do this is to download the end user bundle to a USB device that's connected to your laptop or desktop system. Then you can take that USB device, mount it on the database appliance, and do the next step, which is the unpack. Okay, so we're at the database appliance. Now we have to unpack this zipped end user bundle so that we can then do the actual deployment. So if you've copied the file, the end user bundle file, up to the database appliance, go ahead and issue the following appliance manager command, oak CLI unpack dash package, and then give it the absolute path to the file name that contains that zipped end user bundle. If you use the alternate method where you took the USB device, mounted it on the database appliance, go ahead and issue oak CLI unpack dash package, but this time point to the location on the USB device that contains that zipped end user bundle. Let the unpack run, then you'll be ready to deploy. Okay, now we're at the point where we can deploy the software on the database appliance. And the way we do that is oak CLI deploy dash conf. And give it the absolute path to the file name that contains the configurator session output 
from an offline configurator session that you might have run previously. Now remember there's a step-by-step -step guide on how to run an offline configurator session. You can do that on your laptop or desktop system. Once you run an offline configurator session, there's a file that's produced. That file needs to be copied up to the database appliance as well. That's what we're referring to here when we say oak CLI deploy conf and then the file name. Alternatively, you can run a real-time configurator session on the database appliance itself by simply typing oak CLI deploy. It will then bring up the configurator running on the database appliance. You can go through the screens, answer the questions, and at the end of that session, you'll have the option to go ahead and click the install button, which will start the deployment. Now there's another step-by-step -step guide, Rack in 55 Minutes, which takes you through that deployment. This concludes the Oracle Database Appliance Pre-Deployment Steps Step-by-Step -step Guide. Thanks for watching.